during the Inquisition, we saw the church, which was a big, powerful force at the time, the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, we saw that going on the rampage. Uh, uh, whole villages were called out when the Inquisition arrived in Europe. And uh, you were given a chance to confess as a whole village, you know, uh, to say, we know, we know there's people here who have been thinking about or doing black magic, you see, um, or practicing Satanism. So if you tell us right now, uh, we'll go easy with you. Uh, if you don't, we have to torture out of you. Well, you could you'd be damned forever and you might die too. So people would start making up stories right there and then on the village square and coming out with the most outlandish things, taking their little punishment, a, a few strokes of the whip, the repenting and and uh, asking forgiveness and yada yada. And if enough of them did it, I might satiate the sadism within these inquisitors and they'd uh, hear all the confessions and give them their benedictions and, and go home or go to the next town or village. And it's a sad, sad state when, when that happens. Well, you see, the American Psychological Association for years has gone along the same path as that, as, as has the police. The American Psychological Association has been trying to determine uh, who will be a criminal um, and then that started really with them when they were part of the eugenicist movement under the Rockefeller Foundation in the 1920s. It's now called bioethics committees, so it's much more gentler and, and society oriented. But it's the same thing. If they can just look at someone or look at their blood or their DNA or whatever, they might just be able to tell you how you're going to end up, catch you before it happens and program you, you see. Um, and indoctrinate you into who they want you to be rather than let you allow yourself to come to the to what you'd like yourself to be by yourself. So the American Psychological Association has said many times in their publications uh, that everyone's a potential criminal. Which is true if you go straight by legalism and the terms of legalism um, if it's a crime to defend yourself, if someone's going to try to kill you, uh, and, and you defended yourself, then technically, yeah, you're a criminal. And since everything that lives, even mice, will scratch the noses of cats if they're cornered to try to fight to the last, a rabbit will bite you if you put its hands down its burrow um, to protect its young. Uh, well, they're all criminals, you see. So you can make any natural action a criminal action. And they have been doing this piecemeal, little by little, for the last 20 odd years. So un until they make you the new Soviet, world Soviet man, which is just a robot, basically, who is predictable, uh, then the world can't be safe. And all we have to give up is a right to think for ourselves react as any living creature should react to save its own life and that's all we have to do is give that up and kiss the ring of the king and they'll go easy with us isn't it odd how tyranny and tyrants and, and the megalomaniacs never change never change um, until literally human nature changes by some other means it will always repeat itself in phases because tyrants always rise to the top. Those normal people don't look for power. Only the, the real criminal class go into politics. They crave power. They're good liars, they're psychopathic. That's why they lie so readily and easily to people and they don't blush when they're caught in a lie as a normal person would. The super ego takes over a psychopath. They run on ego. You can call them the worst possible things and it runs off their backs like water off a duck. That's why they go into politics. But as long as they know what the public want to hear, they'll tell you what you want to hear. They'll do something differently, but they'll always tell you what you want to hear. 
And those same people fight like cats and dogs amongst themselves in the most sociable way as they have drinky poos and clink glasses at the cocktail parties and uh, smile and, and put on all the fakery towards each other because each one wants to get above the next by crawling over them. They'd love to see their opposition crushed so they can get up, up there. You know, king tyrant. That's the real world that they live in. There's no compassion of any kind. It's a psychopathic world. Now, how can a psychopath feel safe in a world where he knows he's abused everyone else? The only way he can feel safe is by causing terror on all those beneath him. Standard, routine, routine, perfectly understandable. And we're seeing it being enacted now by a small group, basically, backed though by the bigger powers. And, and they're on a roll. So it's up to us to keep sentience alive and to put the hands out to people who who put it up to you to pull them up. It's up to us to do it. And the only duty we have to do it is not as, as to ourselves and to others, that's it, basically. We have no choice in the matter. Once you really know what's happening, we have no choice. The reason we have no choice is because we're not brain dead. If we were brain dead, we wouldn't be talking like this right now. So we have no choice but to do what we're doing. We also have no choice but to expose the cons that are being used while we go through all of this, the, the big distractions are purposely put out there. And this winter, as I say, I'll give you far more information on certain aspects of this which we haven't really touched on before. So thanks for listening in. Uh, please give support to this website. And we'll talk to you again. All the best.